Hi, welcome to lecture two. We're going to be looking at types of attachment and we're going to be looking at the key study, Mary Ainsworth, with the strain situation. Right, so what you need to know for examination is that there are three types of different attachments we can get. So you need to know what each of these characteristics of attachment types involve. So, and another way to remember it as well, if you think that secure attachment is always type B, insecure avoidant, if you think of the A as avoidant, so A being avoidant and then type A, and the other one resistant is just C. So make sure you remember which types they are as well. Um, secure attached children, um, they love exploring because they know that their caregiver is always going to be there to protect them in case they get hurt so they don't actually feel any problems in exploring. However, if a stranger does come to try and um, communicate with them, they're not going to like that very much because it, um, they, they, it's not their primary caregiver. Um, when their parents do leave, they do get quite upset, but some are quite easy to soothe, others are not. But when the caregiver just come back, like the mother, um, they are really, really um, happy and enthusiastic about the reunion. Insecure avoids, so we, we kind of say securely attached children, um, sorry, they have parents who are very sensitive to their needs. Um, unlike insecure avoidance, so there are two types of insecure attachments. So avoidant, these kids, they will explore the environment. They're quite independent, so they don't really need their prim primary caregiver as much. Um, they're not really that much interested in strangers because they don't really see strangers as a threat because they're so independent in their nature anyway. Um, they can be, so not all the time, they can be quite upset if a parent does leave, but again, not all the time. And when a parent does come back, they just, again, do their own thing. They're not even seeking um, any type of um, reunion with their caregiver. They just kind of ignore the caregiver. And finally, our second type of insecure attachment we have is insecure resistant. Um, these kids, they're quite ambivalent. Uh, they don't really um, like exploring the envi environment and they're not really stranger people either. However, when a um, caregiver does leave them, they do get quite upset. But again, when she comes back or when he comes back, um, they don't, sometimes they can reject them. Um, sometimes they can seek them or sometimes they do both. They both seek them and reject them. So it's very quite shaky, these type of children. And we say that insecure avoidant parents, so going back to insecure avoidant, these parents um, tend to ignore their child a lot. And insecure resistant, they tend to be quite some time issue with their child. For example, oh, um, Fridays, I want to stay at home with my child, for example. On a Saturday, I, I just want to go out with my friends. So their behaviour, their, the parents' behaviour is not so secure. It's very ambivalent, so it keeps changing all the time. So I love you sometimes, sometimes just getting in the way. So it moves us on to our key study of attachment that you need to know. Um, especially when we're looking at types of attachment and it's by Mary Ainsworth and what she devised is a um, scenario called a strange situation. You just think about the name, they're trying to create a strange situation for a child to be in and what they wanted to test, what Mary Ainsworth and, uh, and research, other researchers wanted to test, they wanted to look at particular type of behaviour such as um, reunion behaviour, exploration behaviour how much strange, strange anxiety they had. So do they feel quite anxious when strangers are around? And they wanted to look at their separation anxiety, so how, how upset they were when their primary caregiver left. So they were observing all these types of um, behaviours in this particular situation. Now, one way to remember the strange situation um, procedure is to look at it as M-O-M-S-S-S, -S -S, as in mum S-S-S. If you understand. So what happens is it's a six step procedure where the mother and child, so mummy and baby, they both enter the room and the child is left to play. And what happens the other stranger, so someone completely new to the child comes in and talks to the mother and infant. So he talks to both of them. Um, then the other M, mother now leaves and is left alone with the stranger and the stranger gradually in interacts with the child. Then a first swap, mother returns and a stranger now leaves. So again, they're trying to assess, for example, um, this particular reunion behaviour. 
then as a swap again, mother leaves when child playing again, and child briefly alone, um, and then stranger returns. So there's another kind of swap here. So they wanted to see separation anxiety, so how the baby deals with being left alone, and how the baby deals with a reunion by another person. And then finally, uh, the final swap, where the stranger leaves and the mother returns. So they want to see, again, reunion behaviour um, when a mother comes back. So that is a procedure of the strange situation. Again, key evaluation points for this particular study. Again, I've probably got a few more limitations, as you can see in red, for my reds, and my strengths are in green. So, again, there's so many different ways you can evaluate studies. You need to focus and be very, very selective because you're not going to have the time to write everything you know or every type of single piece of evaluation point you know. So I basically focused on this one. Um, it was, first of all, done in America, so that is lacking some type of population validity um, because the whole world doesn't actually consist in America. We have different... Um, countries, Western countries, non-West, there's so many different types of countries out there, so we can't base at all, like the strange situation or a particular procedure that was based in America, so maybe others. Um, they use middle class American infants, okay, what about the working class infants, would they have exactly the same attachment, would it be worse, yeah, so what kind of attachments would they have, so we can only generalise it with caution to middle class American infants, so we've kind of left out working class. Um, problems with lab experiments, so the thing it was done in a laboratory experiment through like a two-way mirror, so they're watching the child and the um, caregiver's behaviour. The um, problems with this obviously is that when you know you're in a lab setting in this way, so obviously the mum and dad or the mum and baby were coming into the laboratory setting, the mum knew that, that somebody was going to be watching her, so she may have even changed her behaviour in order to please the experiment or to make make herself feel like a good mother so she may have been even more responsive than so at that particular scenario because she's done a laboratory experiment um only 100 the whole thing about being a very small number and being able to generalize I'm not sure we're able to such small numbers however um you can say that lab experiments can be a strength as well because there is high control, very, very high control, so we can eradicate, eradicate any extraneous variables, that things that might get in the way of the experiment, for example, um, noise or um, um, music going on the next door, so everything's eradicated, so they can basically see um, the behaviour that they're looking out for. And again, results supported um, by Van Inzendun et al., which they, um, they looked at across cultural research. Okay, so that brings us on to the second research by Van um, Eisendun and Krunenberg. And um, what they've done, since this, kind of, this, re this study really supports Mary Ainsworth's study, because Mary Ainsworth, as you can see, sorry, Mary Ainsworth, she bas they basically found that secure attachment to 62% of those American children were securely attached. So that's the majority of attachments that they were found. And... They want to find secure attachment because the secure attachment um, they feel is best for emotional development. So what um, these two guys done is they conducted a meta-analysis of findings. So make sure you know what meta-analysis is. It just basically means a compilation of different studies that have been done using a strange situation and they're looking for an overall conclusion. So they don't actually go out and do the study themselves, but they, they just collate all the different types of results from different studies together and they've done this from 32 different studies and um, the studies looked over 2,000 strange situation classifications in eight different countries okay so it looks at different countries of the world so it's a very cross-cultural one um, again they found they supported Mary Ainsworth study and found that secure attachment was the most common followed by avoidant and then um, followed by insecure resistant okay um, insecure avoidant was the most common in every country again except Israel and Japan. I think in Japan it was probably insecure resistant. But generally, um, you need to know secure attachment was the most common. So this tells us if it's done cross culturally that we're born with being able to form attachments um, because they found it in all different countries. So we can say that attachment is innate as a key strength because this is what they found. Um, and then as negatives, 
cultural bias. Strange situation was created in America. Now, you're using what you feel, for example, what um, Americans feel as secure and using that to judge other particular countries, which is not really fair because some countries, for example, they may not actually like a clingy baby. They might say that babies who are independent um, to them are more secure. So we can't really base westernized countries like America and use that as a framework for other particular cultures. And that's what we basically done in this particular study. And then obviously we have problems with meta-analysis. Now, the problem with um, taking on different studies to try and look for an overall conclusion is that the different studies, they all use different types of designs. So some of them might have used um, a repeated measures, independent groups. So generally the conclusions may not be valid because we're not, we're not actually comparing correctly. When you compare correctly, for example, two um, of the studies, of the same studies, have to be exactly the same, use exactly the same tools, equipment, um, but this one actually wasn't, simply because it wasn't, um, um, they, don't, they might not have used the same design, okay, so we're not sure with meta-analysis, so that might be an issue with validity. And that is the end of lecture two, that is all you need to know in terms of and the three types of attachment, Mary Ainsworth's um, strange situation study using MOM SSS and then Van Eisendoon and Kroenberg and their cross-cultural study as a supporting study for Mary Ainsworth. Any issues or problems, please leave me a comment. Bye.